Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Omicron Protocol, and it is for two to four players. It takes about an hour to two hours, and is for ages 13 and up. In Omicron Protocol, it is currently the apocalypse, and bad things are happening. Sims have dropped to Earth, they are the villains, and of course you have to deal with your opponents. Each game is different, because it's going to have different scenarios and objectives that you'll need to complete, and if you can complete a certain amount, usually three, then you will have the last round to finish off getting as many points as you can the person who gets the most points is going to be the winner however there's a couple tiebreakers in the game and you're playing with a ton of different units in this tactical miniature style game let's go ahead and take a look down below at everything you get and then i'll show you how to play so here we have the contents for Omicron Protocol and uh, everything you can get. And I say can because I'm pretty sure it's going to be based on your pledge, which things you get. Maybe there's a full all-in pledge you can pick up everything. But what I have here is the Peacemakers and the Survivalists. There's a couple extra ones we're not using for this specific scenario. It also comes with a bunch of these Sim characters, which are basically like the half AI type villains of the game, which of course is just another villain on top of the players you're going to be playing against. A ton of tokens you'll be utilizing, like luck and action tokens and then round effect tokens that can occur for you. There's uh, different action markers you'll have as well as some other scenario tokens. And then you're going to have these things here which will spawn baddies during certain portions of the game. This is the game board here which is basically going to be customizable depending on the campaign because you'll be placing down all these tile hexes allowing you to change the way the game is going to look as you play each and every round so it's different in every way. There's also going to be these Omicron Protocol cards which you'll be able to select at the beginning of the game and you can obtain them as well. They're going to give you certain bonus actions that you can take in the game that can either help you or in some way hurt your opponent. There's traps which are going to be used to certain scenarios with certain characters and of course there's the cards for each of the different characters. The, these uh I guess these are the law enforcement characters here. They'll all have their own unique cards to use as well as a learn to play mode. And uh, they're going to have special actions and abilities. In general, you're gonna get four actions per character when you're playing the game. You can choose to walk or run and there's certain advantages and disadvantages to both. Additionally, you'll be making sound, whether you're shooting a shotgun, which probably will have more sound or slashing a knife, which could have one uh, or you know a very low sound. So basically the different characters are gonna function in different ways based on even how large their bases are. So here's a cow man here which is going to have three sometimes you have to deal with terrain effects and other times you're going to be having to deal with certain objectives like gathering data and returning it in certain places there's also going to be these noise spawning aspects to the game for each of the different missions will come one of these cards which shows you how to set the game board up and the different aspects of play you'll be getting player reference cards and game reference cards to show you turn sequence and the actions that you have available to you whether they are unique to your character or just the basic actions in the game all in all, this is pretty much what you get in the game Omicron Protocol. Let's go ahead and go down below. I'll show you a basic setup for one of the scenarios and give you an idea of how they play and what you can do on your turn. And then we'll come out and I'll give you our review. So here's Omicron Protocol, and I set it up for two players, and I chose the hands-on research scenario. Now, there's different scenarios in the game you can go ahead and choose from. I have four here. It tells you how to set the game board up, and it also will tell you how many additional hexes you're going to add to the uh, mat. Uh, to create your own unique individual custom game mode. Additionally, every player is going to select four characters from their stack of chosen um, the, cho the chosen team. So in this instance, the survivalist, you can choose four of these guys here, select their player cards, put them next to you, have a pen out that is a dry erase pen so that you can go ahead and use to mark their uh, different requirements, such as HP and or uh, specific character to uh, things like that. These guys have uh, sim damage. Uh, and then the other player will We'll do the same. Everybody's going to select four secretly. Choose those characters and place them on the board based on the scenario. And in the case, mostly it's going to be down this line here to the back, down this line to the back, and so on and so forth for each side. There is the Sims. These are like the neutral bad guys that will start in the middle there. The spawn points and additional little tokens that are going to block movement. And you guys are going to go back and forth placing these tiles down up until the point you get to 10, specifically for this scenario. Uh, and after that happens, then that will end this little phase of the game you're going to go ahead and select who is going to begin first and that is going to be by a die roll the player who is able to go first is the one who's going to get an additional card and the player who's going to go second will get an additional action token these guys here then that player who chose is going to go start he's going to select any of his units and he can go ahead and activate one of them when he activates them he's going to go ahead and look at their character tile so i'm going to go ahead and grab that specific one for this guy this is the lance guy and he's got 
got a horse. He's mounted. And there's certain rules for different ones. And uh, they are going to take one move action and four actions utilizing these blue little action tokens. Once you run out of those, you can't do any more actions for the game. So I'll go ahead and set this here to show you guys. He's got a walk of five and a run of ten. Running requires an action and it provides usually a negative in some way. And walking is simply to just move based on that number. Equestrians, people on horses, can avoid obstacles, but they have to land off of them. And uh, they are able to uh, attack for four, have a dexterity, which is basically a dodge for two, and luck for five plus, which means that every time you get a five plus in your die roll that you're not utilizing for attacking, you can gain these tokens here. And these will help you in some way throughout the game, usually to turn a pip from a number to the next number. So three turns into a four, which can be the difference between a failure and a success. They'll have active abilities that will require ability tokens, and then they're gonna have passive abilities, things like the charging uh, for this specific character. Basically, he's gonna get a bonus to attack instead of a negative, and he's able to jump over obstacles, and whenever he's damaged by these sim guys, he'll take one less. He's also got a lot of health, and it shows the abilities of the character on the far left-hand side. So, when he goes ahead and he chooses to charge, so he'll go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. After that, because he chose his specific charge ability, he's actually going to be able to do an attack. Now, normally you attack with whatever your attack is. So in this case, this guy has an attack of four, so he'll get to roll a four at die, except when additionally, when he charges, he'll get a plus one. He'll roll that versus the Sims dexterity, which is three. So any three pluses will count. He's then going to go ahead and choose his successes and put them on the board here based on whatever he's using. So he's using this stun lance. For every hit, it will do a certain amount of damage. If you don't have enough hits, you'll have to choose the one previous to it. In this case, he needs three to annihilate this Sim but he only has two hits, which means that he can only do one damage. So the rest of the die, he can turn into luck and generate luck tokens. But unfortunately, damage is either all or none. The only other difference between Sims dying is if they get stunned once and then they get stunned again, that will actually eliminate a Sim as well. But for the most part, you need to have those three damage on the Sim. After he's done that, he can choose to attack again if he wants by spending action points or doing any of his abilities. And there's, of course, also a card that illustrates what you can choose to do on your turn. It shows walk, run, charge, uh, drawing from this Omicron deck here for actions, uh, first aid, etc., etc., And then of course your special character actions. After they do that, this player can get a chance to go ahead and do his walk or his run. And also don't forget to, whenever your guys move or charge or, or anything, there's gonna be a chance they're gonna spawn noise. So for instance, this guy here, he's actually gonna spawn up to like, I, I don't know what it is, six noise. You can actually look It'll tell you based on the attack how much noise, so he chose to do, he, did, he, he ran, which is going to be one, he did a noise for his charge, which is going to be another one, and that's uh, so, okay, so he's got two actually, some of them do more than others, obviously. Now, and this is going to assign uh, characters to move, so before we get to this character here, I should also say that uh, each character within a range of two, one and two, is actually going to move by their the opponent towards this character and do an attack, and these guys are actually going to roll their die and attempt to hit your dexterity, and if they can, they will do damage. So in this case, this guy has a dex of two, so anything two or higher will make him take a damage, except for the fact that he can be uh, reducing damage from these guys by one, so he'd only take two in this instance. The next guy would then be able to roll, and uh, there'd be one, he would take nothing. So that is how the damage works for the Sims. Basically, every time a character activates, they'll make noise, and anything around that character based on that number is going to move towards them and attack them. Attack hits dex. The same thing can be said for this guy here as well. Let's say he went ahead and shot this guy here, spending an action token. Maybe he had, oh, I don't know, we'll say six, no six noise, and then he's going to be done. One, two, three, four four, five, six, both of these guys will actually move towards him. And uh, these guys can ignore the terrain. They're not really worried about that, but your guys do. When you walk on terrain, it's gonna cost you two points of movement instead of one. And finally, everybody's just gonna go back and forth, one and one, one and one, until everybody has done all of their movement and all of their actions that they want to do. They're gonna end up with a certain amount of action tokens, whether you have none or just uh, one or two, that will end the phase. In which case, the bad guys will spawn based on the scenario as well as based on noise. And it'll go back and forth with noise up to six. So in this case, if he had six and he had two and these guys only had one, and these guys only had one, it would spawn with these two first. Spawning characters on these spaces here based on the closest range to the character and then moving them towards the character. So in this instance, let's say, 
Uh, this character is definitely going to spawn one. He would spawn one. This would be the closest. And they're going to walk those two spaces of the character or until they end up next to them. And of course, the rest would spawn as well for that specific scenario, moving towards the uh, characters that have the noise and whatnot. And of course, after that two scenario, after that spawning, another spawn will happen based on the scenario. And they'll, of course, do their attacks. And that's basically how the game works. It'll go back to the, this player here, and they're going to do their things as well. Now, let's talk about how to win this game. So first of all, in order to win the game, it's going to be based on the, the scenario. And the scenario says it has objectives. For in this one here, every time you nuke one of these sims, you're going to get a specific data or something like that. And you'll go to the space here and spend an action, and that will give you a point. You can do that up to a certain amount of times. Whenever you KO an opponent's character, that's going to give you a point. And whenever you kill five sims, it'll give you a point as well. When somebody reaches three victory points, that is going to signal the end of the game, in which case there will be a final round of play in which you can try and gain as many victory points as possible. Whoever has the most is the winner and it is going to come down to a tie, then that will be based on whoever has the most KOs or whoever has the most sim deaths uh, going down this tree. And that's basically the idea of the game. Additionally, these cards here, uh, basically at the beginning of the game, when you put these guys down, you're going to put them down based on your character. So you can go ahead and say, I'm going to give this guy two cards, and I'll give this guy three cards or one card after these are all placed. And the same will happen whenever you draw cards from that deck there as well. The cards are going to say stuff like trigger, play this during a model's activation. The model can now shift three to a sim within two hexes, or maybe the model may immediately reduce its noise generated by four. Things that will generally help your characters or hinder your opponents. There's a lot of characters that I didn't use or talk about, so we'll come up above and I'll explain the different characters and maybe some of the additional scenarios and maybe some uh, ways to play the game to uh, annihilate your opponents. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so a couple caveats now. And the first one is when you're placing rubble, generally you're gonna have specific rules, like you can only place it three away. There's certain things like that I didn't get into too much detail because there's a lot that goes on in the game. Uh, there's also some interesting things with the different factions you choose. The Peacemakers will have an extraordinary event that they can do on any activation once per game. These guys basically make models within a range attack instantly for free without actions and survivalists will have something that involves them moving around the board additionally they all have passive abilities too like peacemakers each of their friendly units get a plus one to attack when they're doing ranged attacks and survivalists for survivalists each friendly character ignores up to three damage from sims attack in the game so basically they have that specific card which will have on the bottom right hand corner a little danger sense for the sins and basically it's free health for them but only against sin characters uh, and uh, that's pretty much the basics of it all. There is the different scenarios, and they'll have on the back of the scenario what the noise table is for spawning sims, the objectives, uh, the scoring, the terrain layout, special rules, all that kind of stuff. And it's all located in the book, so you can learn how to play each scenario individually. Once you know how to play one scenario, everything else in this game is going to come together very, very full circle, very easily. And the characters are all very different. Some of them are going to start off with active camo, be able to move faster than others, be on a horse, be actual animals with animal abilities, as well as have things that are basically just maybe an additional attack or an additional range weapon that has more noise. Noise in this game matters. Like I said before, at the end of everybody's activation, there's going to be spawning and scenario spawn and characters moving and attacking and then the next round is going to pop up and the person with the least amount of act action tokens or the least amount of points is going to go first so it can switch in that way and if there's a tie i believe it just switches to the next player who wasn't first the previous round but there's a lot going on as far as maintenance in this game and that may be a positive or negative for you guys who are war gamers or uh, heavy tabletop gamers it's gonna be very easily easy to get into this game as far as placing the dice down based on what the noise level is for each of the different characters and whatnot there will be a substantial amount of movement on the dice removing them and placing them on the table and remembering what creates noise and what doesn't and how much noise each thing creates because that's all very important as to how the sims are going to activate and come after you and do damage to you they're basically like this outside force that is out to get you while you and your opposing factions are dealing with this problem in this current apocalypse landscape and so all of these scenarios have a specific feel to that kind of a thing and the characters are all in their own individual right something unique so that every character you play is always going to feel different in the game there's cards that will talk about traps and how they function and how you can actually shoot off traps uh, from a distance and not have to worry about them and how they can be utilized to mess with your opponent in certain ways or to make them spend certain things 
luck is in this game. And the way luck works is pretty interesting. Whenever you fail an attack or have extra left over from an attack, you can turn that into luck based on your luck value. And that is going to allow you to move your tip to pips up on the die when you're attacking, which is very nice, especially when you've been failing over and over again. You never feel like you're going to constantly fail because that luck will always have the ability to make you regain your momentum. Each character has their own luck and you'll be using that. There's also probably gonna be more tokens and as well as more characters in this game. I'm just giving you a basic rough feel of what is included in this game and how it functions. Obviously, there's a lot of strategy in this game. It is a tactical miniature style game. If you played, a, what is it, Final Fantasy Tactics? That's the most common one, right? Or Fire Emblem. It's gonna feel like that, but you're also fighting against an opponent and there's a lot of ever-changing scenarios and things you need to deal with and how you deal with them is going to be important. Utilizing those cards is a nice touch to the Omicron, Omicron cards and when they are placed down you're going to be like oh wow I didn't know that was going to be happening as well as of course these really cool extraordinary feats when those things happen it can be a huge game changer for either player and they need to be utilized. You have to utilize these things. So remember all your abilities and your, your passives and whatnot. That's something that's going to definitely help you in this game. Quality is nice. All the miniatures come uh, almost fully pre-done. I mean, you have to, there's certain ones that have their, their hand and you have to like stick it on and glue it on, but it's nothing like Games Workshop, but it still gives you a little feel of being able to easily paint the miniatures and put them together. If that's how it comes in the campaign, I'd be totally fine with that, especially for those of you who enjoy miniature painting and construction. It's just enough to not be overwhelming, but still gives you a little bit of that feel of putting together miniatures. You're also going to have the nice artwork for all the characters. The design feels good and it feels easy to read the cards. You know what your characters do. It's just a matter of remembering them. So which comes down to my um, some critiques I would say. And the first thing is there's a lot of maintenance like I explained before. Remembering how much all the noise makes and whatnot can get a little daunting. How the characters move with the sims are and all that pretty I would say complex to a certain extent. Maybe not for like the deep gamers but any of you like middle of the road guys it might be a little more but it, I guess it's something a nice little step up for those of you guys who like tactics and because of all the maintenance though it comes with a lot of choice a lot of abilities and a lot of ways you can utilize your characters in the game so that you always feel like they have something unique to do which is really cool about this type of a game I never feel like I'm out of choice when I play these three four times now even though I play the same team each time, the way I constructed them and utilized them changed every game because of the choices I made and not because of the choices the game made for me, which is really cool. Overall, I really like this game. I think players who like tactical miniature games with a lot of thought in them, as well as the fact that uh, you have to be aware of like what's going on from turn to turn, and how you're utilizing each miniature and when you're utilizing them. If you like that feel, you're gonna really dig this game. Definitely check out Omicron Protocol down below, currently on Kickstarter. Order. If it's something that sounds interesting to you, I look forward to hearing what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check those of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at Omicron Protocol currently down there below in the comment section. Let me know what you think, as well as subscribing. Please, please, it does help, and we do greatly appreciate it. It's a way to keep going for us. A lot of giveaways we're doing right now on unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more giving away the game Dogs right now. I think we're finishing up on the last Simon giveaway. And of course, every Wednesday, a live stream just for you. We give away a bunch of games on that stream and show you a bunch of games you probably haven't seen before. So check us out on Facebook. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to destroying the rebellion and or the resistance, depending on the different things you can do in this game next time. <laughs>